the amount of body motion clearly seen by the movement of the rear view mirrors. See how the Honda transmits more road shock to the body? That translates to a rougher ride on potholed streets. Out on Gateway International's road course, a series of tight turns demonstrates agility and handling. This is what it looks like from the driver's point of view. Now for the real thing. First through the turns is Forrester, being driven pretty aggressively. Notice how Forrester's balance and control allow it to dance around the cones. Next is the Honda CRV. See how it plows into the second curve. Certainly not as precise and controllable as Forrester. Next up is B9 Tribeca, a much larger, heavier vehicle, but it still cars through the turns with ease. Compare that to its direct competitor, the Volvo XC90, which appears to have a much more difficult time remaining under control. In this exercise, vehicles are driven onto a ramp that incorporates four sets of rollers. Two cameras capture the action on both sides of the car. First, the vehicle must climb over a log, demonstrating how power is transferred under a light load. Next, with its front wheels on the rollers, simulating an icy hill, the car must transfer power to the rear wheels so they too can get over the log. Now comes the toughest part. With all four wheels on rollers, it's as if the car is on glare ice. This exercise clearly shows how the all-wheel drive system and the electronic traction control transfer power among all four wheels. The goal is to drive up the ramp past the rollers. Will a Passat be able to do it? Next up is the 2007 Legacy 2.5 GT Limited, equipped with variable torque distribution all-wheel drive with vehicle dynamics control. Again, with all four wheels on rollers, the traction control system must try to eke out some amount of grip in order to climb this simulated icy hill. And, with only a little bit of effort, the Legacy climbs past the rollers. Next, we see the Volvo XC90 approach the rollers. See how the front wheels spin a bit before power is transferred to the rear wheels? Now, what happens when all four wheels are on the rollers? Keep in mind that each one of these professional drivers is trying hard to drive up this ramp. It's also clear that Volvo's traction control system is working very hard here. You can even see some noticeable side-to-side -side motion as an individual wheel receives too much power. Next is our most direct competitor to the Volvo XC90, the Subaru B9 Tribeca. Note how power is transferred front to rear at the beginning of this exercise. And then side to side. And then all four wheels as the vehicle dynamics control system searches for traction. With only a little bit of effort, the Subaru drives up past the rollers. The wet road handling course gives sales consultants a real-world feel for how well the vehicles respond to driver input. Let's compare the Outback and the Volvo XC70. Whoa! Was the driver in control or was the car? 
Here's an accident avoidance maneuver on a wet road at about 35 miles per hour. First with the Outback. Then with the Volvo XC70. Wow, what a difference. Now let's look at the B9 Tribeca compared to the Toyota Highlander. The driver really had to work hard to control that car. Here's another wet road exercise. A dramatic left-right-left maneuver with the B9 Tribeca. Again at about 35 miles per hour. And the same maneuver with the Toyota Highlander. Its stability control system is so intrusive, the driver really has a tough time controlling the vehicle. Here's the Volvo XC70 again. Let's see how it fares this time. Again, the Volvo has a very difficult time in the wet. Let's take another look at that run from a different perspective. Who's really in control? The highlight of the off-road course is this 35-degree dirt hill. No running starts are allowed here, making this exercise even more difficult. Hmm, seems pretty easy for the Forester. Here's a direct competitor, the Honda CRV. Will it or won't it? See how the front wheels are clawing at the dirt while the back wheels aren't doing a thing? Honda's real-time four-wheel drive is supposed to transfer power front to rear, but it certainly isn't doing that now. This is a real-world demonstration of the strengths and weaknesses of competitive all-wheel drive systems. Try, try again, but I guess in this case, it won't. Now we have a side-by-side -side view of the Outback and the XC70. They both make the grade, but the Volvo certainly needs to work harder. Next up is the B9 Tribeca. Even at a very slow speed, it has no problem climbing up this imposing hill of dirt. The Nissan Murano has an unusual continuously variable transmission and a typical reactive all-wheel drive system. Look closely for any wheel spin. You can't tell from this footage, but the driver is pushing down hard on the accelerator. There's just nothing happening at the wheels. It just seems to stall, a very strange performance. Now the Volvo XC90 approaches the hill. Not enough gas, try again. Of course, the driver plays a key role here. These are Subaru salespeople at the wheel, not professional drivers. Will it or won't it? The Toyota Highlander has a very front-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive system. That's easy to see here, since the front wheels are doing all the work. Here's another camera angle, and another try at the hill. The car and the driver are certainly giving it their all. Will it or won't it? 